It's so great to see all the, you know, my brother Matt is here tonight and he's, you know, like I said, he lives in Bali and there's not a lot of stand-up paddlers. And he goes, do young people do stand-up paddling? And I think we sort of proved that to him tonight. Which once again leads right into our last, leads right into our last award. The Lifetime Achievement Award. And you know, I know that a lot of people in the room here, especially a lot of the younger people, they're probably thinking, you know, I'm, I'm as stoked as I could ever possibly be on what we're doing. And they probably don't think a lot about how long that stoke can last. You know, and you're, you're living in the moment, you're not thinking about how long that stoke can laugh, last. But there's certain people involved in a sport, uh, in a lifestyle, that they have proved how long that stoke can last over the course of a lifetime. And I think that that's really all the achievements that we've been honoring tonight and all the accolades, all the trophies, all of that, it really leads to this. And that is a lifetime of this. That is the greatest achievement when you think about it. And that's why it's such an honor for me to be able to stand up here and just talk for just a second about the recipient of this year's Lifetime Achievement Award. This is a surfer, a paddler, a shaper, a designer, an innovator who has maintained that stoke since just, I think, just after World War II. Okay? This, this, maybe World War I or Spanish-American War for all I know. This is a guy, think about this. This is a guy who started on redwood, redwood boards shaped with a draw knife. And yesterday he was surfing on a carbon fiber epoxy board. This is a guy who has seen it all. And through it all, he has not only maintained the stoke that really is at the heart of, uh, of what, we, what we aspire to, but he has shared that stoke with everyone through his attitude, through his, his, his relentless des innovation in design. He shared it with everyone. And he still shares it today. And one of the most interesting thing is, is that when I look around the room here, I don't see a lot of people that started stand-up paddling when I started. When I started stand-up paddling, there was no stand-up paddling. If you didn't have a tandem board, of course the Baneys, you know, they had plenty. And that's where I got mine. I had a Baney, so if you didn't have a stand-up board, you didn't stand up paddle. But there was a board you could get to give this a shot. It was a 12-foot board called the Ultra Glide. And a lot of people got their first taste of stand-up paddling from riding one of those boards. And so in a way, this gentleman that I'm gonna bring up here was really one of the quiet, sort of quiet innovators of everything that we're enjoying here tonight. The board that he designed really helped spread what this stoke was. And you know the best thing about it was? You know, he wasn't making, he was just making it so that people could get out in the water and have fun the way he does. And I know he said this before, but he's, you know, and he'll probably say it again, but he still gets stoked to, and he grabs his board out of his van. I don't know how he gets it out of his van. His van is filled with so much stuff. He gets his board out of his van and he literally skips down to the water. So I'm hoping he will skip up here on stage tonight and I hope you will give him the kind of reception that he deserves for the Lifetime Achievement Award at this year's SUP Awards, Mr. Mickey Munoz. First I heard of Mickey, I was a, a young teenager, maybe 14 years old or so, and we were getting the first surfer magazines and, and the very first surfing posters. And um, you know, one of the first posters I ever saw was the Quasimodo, you know, Mickey Munoz on the nose. And 
next thing I remember is I was at a Huntington Beach contest in the early 70s and the surf was big, it was just closing out, it was 10 foot, it was closing out into the pier and Mickey along with the other guys were taking off on the south side of the pier just tucking and getting tubed, covered up and blasting into the pier between the pilings. And I went up to him afterwards on the beach and he probably doesn't remember and I said, how do you go through the pier like that? He goes, well, you know, you just got to aim and close your eyes and go for it. You know? <laughs> the first guys who paddled out and surf away I may have Mickey was one of those guys and uh, you know that's a big that's that's like one of the first guys to the moon or something you know in those days that was a pretty big deal so I've always you know really respected everything that Mickey's done in surfing um, needless to say he had a pretty influential thing in stand-up because when stand-up first got to be even tried there were really only there was really only two boards you could use, and one was the 12 foot surf tech Munoz, and the other one was the 11 foot surf tech Munoz. Maybe the first two years that was the stand up board of choice. What can you say about Mickey? He's a pioneer of surfing, boat builder, diver, inventor, shaper. Um, He's also, I think he's a pioneer of this whole thing we're here to celebrate tonight, uh, stand-up paddling. And uh, Mickey was the very first one, I think, for a lot of us. The board, the very first board we all had was a Mickey Munoz stand-up board. Laird and Jerry and all those guys were experimenting with Ron House. Mickey already had this board in the market, and so it was the first one that was big enough that we could all paddle. <laughs> well, um, actually, actually, um, you know, I, I owe a lot to uh, Laird. I, um, you know, I guess he got the first achievement award, is that correct? Um, I'm kind of riding behind him, but actually I'm, I'm, I was ahead of him and how I got involved. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> let me, <laughs> you know, Sam, Sam uh, mentioned that uh, I, I've been doing this a while, and I have. Uh, I happened to go to Malibu on one of the biggest days of the year, and, and uh, my strategy was to, this is before I was standing, of course, my strategy was to paddle out and snag a wave, you know, because there are 100 people or 150 people on the point, one of the biggest days in years. And I'm paddling out, I see a wave, and, and there's chaos on the point. All these people are ahead of me, and they fall, and I go, okay, I got a wave. Turn around, take off, I'm riding down the line, and I hear, behind you, it's Laird. Oh, sorry, Laird, and I pull out. Where the hell did you come from? <laughs> He's standing on a 45 pound uh, uh, tandem board with a paddle in his hand. I'd never seen that. So we're paddling out, now we get talking about it, and twice that day Laird rode through the pier. I'd never seen that in over 50 years of surfing. And um, anyway, I, we, I got home that night in the dark. I found a kayak paddle out on my uh, board tree outside. And I, I cut the, you know, Laird told me how long I should make it, you know, one shaka above your head. So, so I, I cut it off and I took a broomstick, hand, I cut a, a broomstick off and I epoxied it on. The next day, I, the surf was still big, I, I paddled my 12 foot uh, surf tech board out and, you know, 
I mean, the surf's big and it was bumpy, lumpy, and, and I'm, you know, staggering and falling, and finally I catch a wave and I ride it in and I go, ah, uh, throw the paddle on the beach and went back out and went surfing. <laughs> couple, couple months later, uh, a friend sent me a carbon paddle and now I had a real tool in my hand. And anyway, that's what kind of started it. But, you know, really, um, everybody that's been up here to tonight is, is why I'm doing this still, because I love it. And I, the people are so fantastic and inspirational. Um, my wife, Peggy, who's a kick-ass paddler. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've, we've gotten involved with, with, I know one of the, the things that came up tonight was CF. Um, we got invo we've gotten involved with CF, and I know Laird and, and Dave Kalama and a lot of other people are involved. In, and, uh, you know, we've, we've, we've run clinics on stand-up paddling and stuff and, and been able to raise a ton of money. Um, and CF is one of those diseases nobody wants. You'd rather have cancer, believe me. It is horrible. But um, because of surfing, because uh, the inhalation of, of salt air, they've been able to almost double the life of CF patients who at one time could only live to 17, or yeah, that was their life expectancy, and now it's doubled. So. So it's really huge, and 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 I got to, you know, hang out with Will Schmidt uh, a couple months ago at Outdoor Retailer, and got to paddle around with him for an hour or so, and 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 believe me, what that man did, that was huge. You know, that was a huge accomplishment. He didn't talk about it, but I just want to say I've been around the water all my life, and and what he did is. You know, that was a hell of an accomplishment. And what he did it for is even better. You know, I, I, I went up to the Lake of the Sky race and, and, and you know, I'm, who can I compete against? I'm, you know, competing against myself, but I'm out in the middle of the pack and I'm, I'm, I'm with, you know, 10 year old, 12 year olds, 14 year olds, <laughs> girls and guys and there's a pack of them right and they're all and they show no mercy on the turns man they, you you're getting a turn I've got a I got a board between my legs I got one on my neck and you know no mercy I go okay no rules I'm drafting then so I'm I'm on them <laughs> and uh, I mean it was totally inspirational because they were so stoked and and me too you know it just pumped me up and and that was a five mile race it really was six and a half miles longest five miler I've ever been in <laughs> and at altitude too so um, it's really about the people you know and everybody here I mean it's I, I mean I love you guys thank you I'm gonna take your picture <laughs> Thank you.